Alex. Hi, I'm David. Hi, I'm Julia. Hi, I'm Nicole. And I'm Ben. And today we're going to explain how a four-stroke internal combustion engine for a lawnmower works. So to start out with, this is the drive shaft. And if your input's coming in from here, it's going to rotate it. And this part meshes with the inside piston. So this is the drive shaft when it's assembled with the piston rod. And as this rotates, you can see that the piston rod moves if my hands weren't so sweaty. And it causes the piston to go up and down, as you can see. Now a few other things to note are these big metal pieces are to help keep the center of mass more towards your axis of rotation. So when this moves, obviously the piston rod um, is moving up and down and you've got this metal arm out here. So if you had that hanging off, if you have a swinging mass hanging off of your center of rotation, it causes this kind of like glug, glug rotation. So by putting these pieces on the other sides, then we allow the center of mass to be closer to the center of rotation. Uh, now we're going to talk about the camshaft which is located here. And on the camshaft, we've got a gear that is clearly much larger than the one that's on the drive shaft. And this gear is about, it's got twice as many teeth as the one on the drive shaft, and that's because this is a four stroke, which means that for every two ro revolutions of this drive shaft, we want there to be one revolution of this. So you've got two cams, and each of these are going to actuate our valves, which go to the piston. And so we have four strokes and a four stroke. There's intake, compression, power, and exhaust. So the intake, the ex intake occurs right after the exhaust, and then you've got power and compression. So as you can see, these lobes are offset by about 90 degrees. And so when this goes for through one rotation, you've got um, one of these, I'm assuming this is exhaust, intake, and then your power and compression as well. So this assembles right in here. And there are also marks on these gears so that you mesh them with the right tooth so that it's synchronized with when you want your power exhaust and take all of the strokes to occur. Another part we've got on the inside of our engine is this diaphragm here. Um, and this is a device that allows um, exiting but not entrance. And there's an oil filter on the inside. So um, when excess pressure is built up, it will force oil through the filter. And then um, on the inside of our housing here, we have another gear, which as it spins, it's probably kind of hard to see on the video, but it opens up these arms on the outside. So I can kind of manually pull those. Um, when these arms are out, it, once they're fully extended, it's going to prevent further rotation. So this is an RPM limiter, which keeps the engine from spinning faster than it's designed to. Here uh, then comes in contact with this rod on the inside, which is con going to be connected to our fuel intake. So next we have these two rods, and these are inserted right into this part right here. There are two little grooves on the inside. It's probably hard to see on the camera, but they just slide right in. And as the machine is going, they are driven by the cams and they end up moving up and down. Now moving forward with the, the push pins, uh, we have these connected to the rocker arms right on the inside here. And as the cams move the pins up and down, it compresses the spring and opens the valve on the inside. And then when the spring is released, it closes the valve. And then you can also tell on the front here that this is the intake and then uh, this is the exhaust. You can tell by the, all that black stuff right there. And on the front we have our spark plug. It just screws right in on top here. Uh, this part is ceramic so that um, it doesn't melt off. So this is the fuel inlet, as you can see it here, was, uh, this is the priming button, so it like acts as a manual uh, suction to draw up the first bit of fuel, and then once the engine starts, it will uh, uh, pump in more fuel by itself. So here's our fuel inlet on the engine, and you can see it can take fuel in, and then it connects to the fuel inlet for the piston assembly. The outside of the case it has all of these little ribbons and uh, heat sinks to help dissipate the heat internal 
combustion heat generated from the combustion of the fuel. On the outside, there's another heat sink which rotates with the shaft. Thank you.